Okay, if you're a Christian, you may have noticed that there's been a rise over the last few years or so um, of people trying to go back to the old law, the Mosaic law of the Old Covenant, um, you know, Old Testament, okay? Um, they Sometimes these groups will go by... Uh, like Torah, they'll call themselves like a Torah group or whatever, um, you know, referencing the Old Testament. And uh, a lot of times they will insist on calling Jesus Yeshua. Now, I'm not against calling Jesus Yeshua, um, but it just so happens that people who, you know, insist on that, uh, generally it's because they're caught up in trying to go back to the old law, saying that we need to keep all those old ordinances and, and the, keep the Sabbath and go back and let the ground rest and all these other things and basically become Jews like pre-Jesus all over again. Um, sometimes they go by that Torah name. Uh, sometimes they go by um, Hebrew Roots Movement. Uh, they are super into all that too, going back to the supposed Hebrew Roots. Um, and so this video is to address that movement, and this is for Christians who want to be on their guard against that. And um, first of all, I want to ask the question, why is it that there is such a push for people to go to the Old Covenant law? Why is there this push where people want to start keeping the law again? And um, it's actually funny because Jesus literally addressed this already in the gospel. So I'm going to read a couple of texts to you, okay? And then I'm going to explain to you what he's talking about here. Um, if you read in Matthew 9, I'm going to read it for you. It says, Matthew 9 verse 16 says, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. And then this story is also reiterated over in Luke 5, verse 36. It says, And he spake unto them a parable, uh, a parable unto them, I should say, saying, uh, No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles, and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new wine bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, The old is better. Now, what can we learn from this parable that Jesus told? Um, first of all, these these things are allegories of the covenants. You have the old covenant, which included the law, the Ten Commandments, all of the sacrifices, all of that was the old covenant that God made with the people. Then you have the new covenant, which is what he was instituting. You know, that's why in um, Matthew, uh, the parable, excuse me, not the parable, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, when he gives all these different um, commands, then he says, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's literally talking about his commandments, his commands that he's giving right there. He's not referencing back to the old law. That's just not what's going on there. And uh, so the thing is, he's in, he's instituting a new covenant right here. And uh, the old and the new, they don't agree. So that's why it says, um, no man put a piece of new garment upon an old. Um, otherwise... Then, excuse me, I'm trying to read it. Then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeth not with the old. So they don't agree with each other. The new and the old, they don't agree with each other. Okay? And uh, you have to keep them separate. You have to keep the old covenant. Let it be what it was. The new covenant is separate. Don't be trying to dip into both of them or say that you're, oh, I'm a new covenant Christian, but then you're going to try to keep the law. Or keep the Sabbath and bind that on other people. Like, that's not biblical, dude. They have to stay separate. That's what Jesus is telling us. He says, but new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. That's what it says. Because when you start messing with the old covenant, you start messing with the new covenant, you mess them both up. You must let them both be their own separate thing. The old covenant with all of its laws, its regulations, its ordinances, its Sabbaths, all of the things that that entailed has to remain just that, the old covenant. And then if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, because that was all pointing up to Jesus. Now with Jesus, we have a new covenant. It's a better covenant, the Bible says. And uh, so when we have that, then don't start dipping into the old, okay? They are separate 
covenants, and they have to be kept separate for them both to be preserved. Otherwise, they are both destroyed, according to Jesus' allegory right here. Now, here's our key at the end. Now, why is it the people are trying to do this, right? To dip into the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, even though they're New Covenant Christians? Here's our key. Go down to verse 39 there. Uh, Luke 5, 39. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. See what Jesus is saying there? When people are all into their works, they have the old covenant, right? That's what he says. When they have the old, then they don't want new. Why is that? That's because they would rather do something for their salvation. They want to feel like they're doing something. So they say, like, then they hear about the gospel, uh, which has to do with the grace of God, Jesus doing everything for us. Um, and us just putting our faith in him and him, you know, finishing everything. Cause he's the author and finisher of our faith. Um, he did all of it for us. When they hear that, they don't want it. They're like, no, that's scary. I'd rather stick with the old. I'd rather stick with my works and feel that I'm doing something to help myself get to heaven. When in fact, they're just keeping themselves enslaved. Um, because you can't, then they're putting themselves in the old covenant. It's either new or old. You cannot be in both. And uh, so this is what we see happening with these new groups that co are coming out, these Torah groups, uh, these Hebrew roots movements groups. Um, that is, and there's probably other names out there too. I'm not familiar with all of the new groups, but that is the push for the law. It's because they would rather feel that they're doing something for their salvation. Like I'm really contributing. I'm really following the Lord. I'm really acting out my faith. Really? Because he didn't tell you to go and keep the old law to act out your faith. What did he say? He said to believe in the one who was sent and to follow his spirit. That's what he, we were told to do as New Testament Christians. He never told us to keep the law. So, um, but that is the, the uh, predicament that we see. And that's why people uh, are trying to introduce the law back again. And all that does is pervert the gospel, which Paul says uh, is no gospel at all. If you pervert it, then it's not the gospel anymore. It's either the pure gospel or it's not.